In this video, we're going to be discussing setting up your own AWS account to take advantage of some of Amazon's really cool services. Helping me in this video is one of our ace hitters here at RCC. This is Jacob Taylor. Hi, Jacob. Hi, all. Hi, Richard. Hi, Jacob. Everything's uh, good. So uh, Jacob is going to walk us through the account setup process for AWS. So this account setup process is the same as what you would do if you were setting up FileMaker Cloud with Amazon. So it's the first process of going to Amazon and setting up a username and password that's specific to you, and then also inputting a credit card that Amazon can use for an ongoing basis. So Jacob, why don't we fire things up here? Okay. You can use your search engine of choice. We will navigate here and go to the sign up. Okay, so we end up on the Amazon uh, general AWS web page, right? So you're going to go out to the sign up page. Um, our CC has a pre built link that will take you here. Um, we give it out in our uh, cloud information uh, and pricing sheet um, that all of our all of our CC's customers receive um, when they're interested in cloud. It also includes pricing information. But for the purposes of this video. We're just going to walk through account sign up. So I'm going to put my email in. I'm going to use a actually a super secure password. Um, let's start it out with password. And then I need some of these crazy characters over here. Um, and then RCC test account. Um, this is what shows up on the top right side um, after you've created your account and you're logging into your Amazon console. Um, which uh, viewers will see in just a moment, it will have the name of your account on there. So if your company, for whatever reason, maybe has multiple accounts, um, you'll be able to more easily differentiate them if you name them a certain way. If you make an account for a specific purpose and then you have another account for a different purpose, you can, you know, have a, instead of test account, it could be, you know, our uh, storage and backup stuff. And then the other one could be, you know, other hosting items. So we're just going to hit continue here, and here we are. So now they're going to want to select a professional account as opposed to personal. Um, yes, because they're going to be a business. So I'm going to put my number in here, and then our. And there we go. We have all of our details built. And of course, what are the terms of the customer agreement in? Uh... In plain English, what does that more or less say? <laughs> the very short version and the, the most important part for most people that would be watching this video um, is that unlike maybe other places that they'd work with uh, for business, there isn't anything with Amazon where they will let you like pay late or something like that. So probably one of the biggest considerations is if you're not paying your Amazon bill on time, um, you're going to have problems because they will just turn your stuff off. Unlike a lot of places where, you know, you can go into arrears and maybe create a, a payment plan or something like that. If you, you know, get yourself into a situation, um, Amazon doesn't really care because they are a giant company um, and they are used to you know, working with very large corporations with billing departments and stuff. Um, and so probably the biggest and most important part of that is, you know, your relationship with them as far as billing goes. If you have a server hosted with them, it will get turned off if you don't pay your bill. So you want to be very careful about that. There we go. And we're going to create our account. And we are already here on the credit number. Okay, we're going to go ahead and hit the submit button here. And this will take us to the other side. Bing, and that's the one. Okay. So they're going to do a quick security check on your uh, cell phone. Yep. And that's, and we're just going to hit call, and that's going to ring me. Oh, uh, they do it backwards. So this one is where you actually give you the numbers and you put them in your response, I guess. Or they call you, you answer the call, and you put it in their phone. Yep. I'm on on my end. All right. Hello, this is Jacob. This is Amazon. Please press your numbers. All right. All right. There it goes. Uh, not that the people on the recording can see that, but I picked up my phone and I punched the number that was on that screen in. And then it, uh, once they confirmed it on their end, I did not touch anything. The page updated itself that they had confirmed it. Wow. So we're going to hit go. Um, this is the most 
not actually complicated. This is one of the biggest questions I used to get from clients was which plan do they pick? Um, and we actually have had this year a couple of clients pick one of these support plans. They're great um, if you would like AWS to help you. However, the thing I want everyone to know is that AWS doesn't know anything about FileMaker, FileMaker Server, FileMaker Cloud, or any of that kind of stuff that you might be running. Um, and so getting one of these support plans is great if you have you know, issues very specific to like the machine that you're using, but they won't know anything about your own application that you're running. Um, and so they cannot and will not help with that. If you have like a networking issue on your server or something, they'll help you. But outside of that, um, you want to basically you want to be picking the free plan here. So we're going to do that. Okay, great. And that's it. We are now waiting for the email. So now we're going to get a confirmation email, and then we can sign it. Actually, we can sign it uh, when this is complete. Oh, there it is. All right, keep trucking along then. Okay. So we'll bring that right over here so everybody can see. This is the email I received saying, hey, welcome. Um, so now we can sign in. Okay, go ahead and sign in for us. We're going to sign into the console. I'm going to put the email in. Correct. And we could type that out or uh, Safari has helpfully saved it for us. Awesome. So if you want to see information about transcribe services or these other services, how do we find out more information? We go up, I guess, up to services and then down. Yeah, we can pull that out. You can you can use that search box that was there. There's one here as well um, to search if you know the name of it already, or you can sort of look by category. I would probably type it in so we can start out with trans and it'll su suggest the speech recognition software for us. Excellent. Excellent. Very cool stuff. So this gets to the point we have set up an Amazon account. They can charge us as necessary. If we're going to set up uh, where we're going to activate or use services, we need some additional information, Jacob. What, what do we need? In Amazon parlance, you have uh, basically there are these little secret codes that you use. Um, one of their keys, basically, you can think of them like a key. There's a pair of them, though. Um, not one key for a lock, but two. And so you need both of them to talk to Amazon. And if you're putting them into a program or something like that, or a script that you might be writing in FileMaker, you'll put those into a variable or something like that. But before that, you have to get them. And these, uh, the ones that we will show you how to get here in just a moment are called your root account credentials. And those are very, very secret. And we'll be showing them to you in the video, but you should protect them. Um, you should consider them like you know important business information um, and make sure that uh, people that shouldn't have them don't have them. They will give uh, control, basically uh, unlimited control over this account that you have just made on Amazon. Um, and that includes the ability to, you know, spin up expensive things and charge you lots of money on, uh, on Amazon's behalf. Um, so you, you want to protect that if you have concerns about that in your organization. Go ahead and do that. So that is uh, called the IAM system, something in access management. I'll come in here. Identity and access management. Perfect. And so the thing that we are going to do here is we're actually going to undo this little green checkbox. And so we have not created any root keys. This will pop up saying, are you sure you want to do this? Not that it's super important in this particular video, but there are uh, additional ways to do this. And you can maybe in a later video, we will look at how to make limited sub accounts that can only do certain things or only access certain services on your account. But for the purposes of like setting up a FileMaker cloud or a FileMaker server, that's not necessary. So for this, we're going to go here to access keys. You see access key ID and secret key. That's the pair. So we've just made this account today. We don't have one, so we have to create a new one. So we're going to do that, and that's actually done already. I can show it to you. One important thing that I like to do, which is either you can copy and paste this out and you know keep it somewhere safe. If you click this download key file button, it will give you a CSV with uh, these two pieces of information on it, which you can keep on a backup somewhere just in case you you know lose it or something happens. So let's go ahead and assume for a second that we've got to this part. We go ahead and hit the dismiss button up there at the top, right? And uh, we close this out. Now we see the access key there at the top. That was kind of this not secret part of it, right? I guess, right? Yep. But what if I want to go back and find the secret part again because I've lost it? 
So that's why I suggest downloading that CSV just in case. At this point, that secret key is no longer accessible to you. Ever. Once once you've dismissed, yeah, Amazon will not let you get it. There, As far as I know, there is not a way to retrieve it after you've dismissed that dialogue. So you'd have to create a new access key if you, if you needed one, correct? Correct. Um, and you can have two of them be active at once. That's all, something else to know. So you could deactivate a key and reactivate a key. Okay. We do that. Bink. And see, we have two of them now, but we can't create a third. It blocks the button for us. So we'd have to deactivate, say, the first one, make it active. Mm -hmm. And so it wouldn't actually work anymore. If someone had that key, it's like our secret access codes, it wouldn't work anymore, right? So then we, then at that point, we could create a new one, right? We actually have to delete it. Okay, so we made that one inactive. I'm going to delete this. So you can have up to two keys at once, and these are both full access to absolutely everything in your account. They can be active or inactive. One of the wonderful things about making them inactive is it instantly stops anyone who's on your stuff. So if you know that one of these keys has been breached or lost or you know whatever might happen to it and you're not sure of who controls it or something like that, um, you can come in here and either make it inactive or delete it, and that will instantly cut off anybody who's on that using that key. That can be a good thing because you know maybe you're trying to limit damage being done or money being spent on your behalf, but also it means that if you're just not sure what's happening, um, you can lock it down pretty easily. Come in here and click the button and get rid of it. All right. Well, that covers the basics of setting up uh, your AWS account and also uh, generating and saving and frankly managing your super secret access keys. So please don't lose these, right? Very important, right? Because there's no uh, unwind on that would be great. And then once again, as a security reminder, someone with these keys can log on to Amazon and turn on all sorts of additional services. This would be like, if this was like a uh, Honda or Toyota dealership or something like that, and they had these access keys, they could go online and buy a new car and have it shipped to them. Now, that's a metaphorical example, but you get the idea. You could randomly have a $5,000 or $10,000 bill in the mail because someone did something malicious with these keys. So you don't want to do that. Very important. Yeah, don't, don't post them publicly. Keep them close to your chest. Keep, keep good control over them. All right. That's it for this one. Thanks. Thanks.